Hi folks, let's go over fourth axis toolpaths in Fusion 360, including contained features, uncontained features, as well as how to wrap a toolpath directly around a cylinder. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. We'll start off easy. I want a fourth axis toolpath to machine this pocket. 2D, adaptive clearing, pick my tool. Under geometry, really important, we need to first check wrap toolpath. I'm gonna pick that cylinder floor. And then under pocket selections, I'll choose the floor contours and click OK. Just that simple, pretty straightforward. Aside from having to know, it's important to first check the wrap cylinder before you pick the pocket or the contours. It shows simulating the tool moving, the part itself would actually be what moves. If you noticed there in the simulation, this part actually exacerbates or highlights a problem with fourth axis, which can get pretty complicated, but it has to do with what's driving the control point of the tool. And this pocket was machined straight down, so this is not possible uh, to machine correctly, pursuant to the model rather. If I go to simulate and I click on show points and we say pick a point over here, you'll see we are violating the solid model there because when the tip of the tool is perpendicular or normal to that plane, it's coming out at an angle. I'm not worried about that in this demo because today we're just trying to focus on how to learn these tool paths. If I want to do a finishing operation to walk around that, awesome news, right click, create derived operation, 2D milling, 2D contour. If you needed to change your tool, you could. Otherwise, you're done. It inherits all the other features and preferences that you chose in terms of the wrapped features and the contours. We can even chamfer this. I don't believe we can use 2D chamfer yet in fourth axis, but we can use 2D contour. I'll pick a chamfer tool. Again, wrap toolpath first. Contour selection will be the top edge this time. And what we'll do is say chamfer width of 0.005 foul with just a small offset. This is a pretty small part, which is why we've got small chamfers. And we go a bit to a simulation. Here's, what, here's a good trick. I hit pause right there. I can orbit around by holding down my middle mouse wheel. Better yet, I can left click and hold and I can drag to the right or left to scrub forward or backward. It's a really handy trick to kind of zoom in and look at what exactly is going on as you're simulating. So how do we do a 2D adaptive on effectively an open or an uncontained face like this cylinder section here? Again, like last week, we've got to make use of the patch environment. Switch from cam to patch, create, offset, I'll click this cylinder, and by creating an offset with zero distance, we've effectively added a new patch that happens to be the same diameter as that. One of the tricks to doing well in the patch environment and CAD and CAM is making use of the light bulbs. So in this case, I want to take a closer look at the body we just made. I'm gonna turn the, the part body off, which leaves only the patch body that I just made. Now this has the same problem because it's an infinite loop around. Fusion doesn't know, at least right now, uh, in Fusion's maturity, how to handle that. We'll talk at the end of the video about the fourth axis state of the world. So we need to split this up. The easiest way to do that is I'm going to turn my origin light bulb back on. And we've got this plane right here. So this is the X, Y plane because it's between the red and green. You can see that plane bisects our cylinder even though it's only shown over here. So I can go to modify split body because I want to split this body. So what's the body to split? I'll click on that. What the tool I'm doing the work with, what am I using to split it? I want to use that plane. You see it draws a circle around it like so, click OK. And what was body 16 is now body 16 and 17. Done with my origin for now. Don't need to see it, so I will turn it off. Hop back 
into cam. 2D, adaptive clearing. It's actually pretty easy now. Same process. Wrap toolpath. I'll pick just the top one. Pocket, selections. I'll click that. Click OK. I can now expand my part. Turn off the body 16 and 17. Turn back on the main part. And you can see how that toolpath works. So what we could do, that's only going to machine half of it. In fact, it's not even going to quite machine half. We'll come back to that. Let's turn body 17, nope, 16, there we go. And let's right click, duplicate, and I'll edit this next one, and I'll just change the chain by deleting this one and picking that one, and that will now machine the bottom half, that will machine the top half. Two things, one, right now, for me at least, it's too buggy, it wasn't allowing us to pick both chains in the same 2D adaptive, you'll see what happens here. It kind of fails. Oh, go figure, there it worked. Uh, you'll see it doesn't work here in a second though because the problem is right now, this toolpath is not going to fully machine uh, the part. When we simulate and take a look, you're left with this area here between the two. Easy way to fix that. Back into patch. Turn my part visibility off. Body 16 on modify, extend. I can now click the first line, hold down control, and that lets you click the second line. And I'll expand both of these up, say, by 0.15 inches. Click OK. We shouldn't have to do anything other than regenerate our toolpaths. Ah, so now you can see the problem I mentioned. When you try to combine both patches into one 2D adaptive, it incorrectly offsets the one. So again, is that great? No, it's not great. We'll talk about that at the end of the video. But the fix for now is to do one in each operation. So that should take care of the overlap. You can see now those tool paths slightly overlap, right? Like so. Simulate. Fast forward. There might be a tiny scallop here which we could fix by extending that uh, patch just a hair more. There we go. Now they're fully overlapped. Simulate. Fast forward through, and we've cleaned all of that up. Awesome. Okay, last, certainly not least, how do we get this toolpath that walks around the part? What should be the simple thing is tricky because again, Fusion right now doesn't understand how to unwrap a complete circle. What do I mean by that? If we do a 2D, 2D contour, Under Geometry, Wrap Toolpath, I'll pick that face. In this case, let's just pick a line segment or a partial contour and click OK. Fusion has no problem doing it. But if I try to change that to the whole circle, it automatically already says can't unwrap a cyclic geometry. So how do we fix that? Well, it's pretty easy. Go back into Model, Sketch, Create Sketch. I'm going to create a sketch on this face. I'm going to hit S, A, R, C. S brings up the shortcut window, A, R, C for arc. Center, point, arc. I'm going to place the center right here. And for now, I'm just going to come down and let it snap to the side here and over to here. That's way shorter than I want. But by turning off my body, you can see I've created a line segment. I'm going to hit escape to get out of the arc mode. So now what I can do is I can drag this thing around. So let's use some sketch constraints to lock it in place. So I want this bottom point to be horizontal with the center line, or vertical rather. One, two. Now I want this point to come almost all the way around. So I drag it pretty close, D for dimension, one, 
two, and we'll say 0 0.005. So basically, so it's five thousandths shy of a complete circle. Stop sketch, turn my body back on, in cam, I'll do a 2D contour, again, wrap toolpath, pick that cylinder, and under contour selection, I can now pick the partial contour, which is really close to being a complete contour, click OK, and Fusion doesn't know what to do. So I think this is a glitch, and the way to fix it right now is to right click, compare and edit, and t start typing unwrap, and you need to change this no to a yes. Click OK, regenerate it, and now we've got a toolpath that for all intents and purposes should work. It's, you could change that five thou to be a little tighter, uh, or you could create a second sketch and have it overlap like so. Now there's another cool trick I figured out that's a little bit easier, which is, remember that partial contour we did up here? It's only machining that section. Well, there's this thing called tangential extension distance, which extends the cutting before and after the cut. And it ends up that if you increase this, let's just say five inches, it's smart enough to recognize that's around a curve, and it actually handles this pretty well. So what is that diameter? It's 0.5, so 0.5 times 3.15 will round up from pi, 1.575. So if I change the tangential extension to 1.575, that should walk around that just a hair more than once. Simulate, play. Oops. Ah, that's doing it both uh, on both ends. So it's 1.575 divided by two. My fault. Simulate, click OK, play. There we go. Folks, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something. Yes, Fusion 360 has some room for improvement when it comes to the fourth and fifth axis toolpaths. Here's the thing, so many of the CAM packages that you've heard of buy their CAM kernel, the meat of CAM, from a company called Module Works. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's some big names in this list though. And the downside of that is you're kind of stuck with what Module Works has. And so I will give a lot of credit to the, the Autodesk and the Fusion 360 team. They are starting from scratch and that gives them the chance to really rewrite the rule book on how to handle multi-axis toolpaths. The upside of that is I think there's gonna be some great long-term results. The downside is yes, it is frustrating. There's things that don't work, there's things that partially work, there's things that are glitchy, and the reality is that's the only solution we've got for now. I wish it weren't that way, however, I am still excited for what's to come in the long run, and I'll be honest, right now, I still can't fight the value. For us to go purchase true fourth and fifth axis cam from a leading competitor uh, would be well into the 10, if not 20 plus thousand dollar value, and for us, we're able to get most of this working the way we need to. And look, good things to come, folks. Again, hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned. See you soon.